Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios and I'm back today to talk about glazing. Uh, I talk about it in my videos from time to time, but I haven't like, demoed it in a really long time. And I usually say like, yeah, go watch somebody else's video about it. But uh, this is my approach to glazing and I want to show it to you in this big giant piece I'm working on and almost done with. Stick around. So glazing is a technique that is normally associated with oils, but there's also a lot you can do with it with acrylics. It's just approached and uh, uh, painted in, in a very different way. The, the technique isn't quite the same. Uh, the only thing that's really similar is that you're using a uh, sort of transparent or translucent colors to uh, change underlying color and, and, and value in some, uh, some respects uh, to whatever happens to be. You have Whatever you happen to be painting. Uh, now, where traditional oil painters were, will usually use glazing is in portraiture. So getting the soft, almost glow that you see in uh, uh, faces and, and skin tones in a lot of traditional oil paintings, that comes from uh, those slow builds up, uh, build up of, of thin and transparent color, uh, which is what artists refer to as glazing. Now, how, how I approach glazing is I'm in the last about two to five percent of this piece and I use it as sort of a final detailing to bring some additional color into my work uh, as well as to uh, sometimes in, in many cases uh, fix a lot of mistakes that I made in the first place. Uh, so let me uh, roll out some colors and show, show you what I've got here for today. Okay so first thing first let's have a look at some color here. Now uh, for the bulk of my regular acrylic work and uh, the bulk of this painting in particular I've used my regular heavy body acrylics. Now for most of these colors, these are fairly opaque colors. Now, there are a few of them that lean a lot more transparent, uh, specifically the zinc white. I use this a lot for my water. Uh, the smalt hue, which I'm actually going to grab, I use this for my shadows a whole, t whole heck of a lot. Um, and then there's other c more colors like the Indian yellow hue, which is also very, very transparent. And you can see that uh, with the help of the lens. <laughs> right about there where uh, all of that is coming through. Uh, but a lot of times when I'm, I'm doing sort of my finishing glazing, I'm using usually my uh, high flows and inks as well as some of the golden opens. Uh, so for, the, for this particular one, I'm actually going to start with I think some of the uh, open alizarin crimson hue. I want some more warmth. I usually use this uh, Quinn Nicolazo gold for that. Uh, I'm going to pull, actually I really want to work with some of the inks. So I'm actually going to grab some napo crimson. And uh, that might be it for now. I might lean a little bit towards this muted violet, but I think that's probably all I'm going to need for the time being. Now, real quick, right before we go to the painting, I do want to show you my palette. I can't hold it up, and I can't really have an extra camera over here right now since I'm on an easel and way outside of my normal setup. Um, so I've got the uh, the naphthol crimson and the and, and the, the purple ink here. That's the Alizarin Crimson um, open, and then bigger pile of the Quinn Nicolazo Gold since I plan on using a lot of that. A little bit of small off the, the side, and the biggest thing I need to add here is some acrylic uh, glazing liquid. Now, you don't have to use this strictly for glazing. I'm using it uh, as a supplement to actually pull a lot more of the saturation out of these colors, or not well, not so much the saturation, but if, if I go directly color onto canvas at this point, it's going to really overpower um, uh, w the color I already have on the canvas. So I don't want to do that. I want to build up a more subtle color to this. So I'm going to be dipping in the glazing liquid first for each sort of batch of color, setting with water and kind of going back and forth in little uh, one, two, three, four motions like that, like just real quick this way, that way, thinning out the color uh, as I work. So this is uh, my brand new painting uh, that I'm almost done with called uh, Valley of the Colossus. Uh, really fun, this is a two by three footer, uh, 24 by 36 inches, or I don't have any idea what that is in centimeters, but uh, it's big. Uh, actually, well, the three foot's close to a meter, so it'd be like two thirds of a meter by a meter. Um, but uh, really fun working on this painting. I'm actually uh, in the process of both in recording this video as well as uh, the other one I'm working on, which is sort of a behind the scenes uh, uh, look at my process and, and what I'm thinking about going into each painting session. Uh, but for today we're talking about glazing and uh, again I'm grabbing some warm colors out of this piece. This is fairly uh, 
fairly a cool overall palette. There's a lot of greens, there's a lot of bluish grays, and there's obviously a lot of the blue from the sky. So I want to glaze in some warmth to this, specifically uh, in with the grass to just bring a little extra color into all of this. So for this, I'm going to be just bringing, I'm starting on the left side here, I think, and, and just bring a little extra color, probably working from the shadows up. Um, I don't want to disturb any of my line work here. I just want to try and pull a little color in. Go dip of the water, some of that quinacolazo gold, and the uh, glazing liquid. Also, you probably saw that tiny little jar. That was my water vessel. I don't need a ton. Now, that's pretty loaded up on that brush. I'm not going to wipe some of that away on my pants, so I have very, very little, very little paint here. And just ever so slightly, start to just pull some of that color in. I've got all these trees here, so I don't want to overlap them to the point where it's going to take that away. And you, you'll be able to see this, this gold as I'm coming across the yellow a little bit more. It's going to be just that little extra bit. You can add a lot more. I'll, I'll let you just for the sake of uh, just for the sake of showing you what, how this can overpower it. If you don't really dilute this down, I'm gonna go straight into that Nicolazo gold and do this with it. Now this can work, but again, I don't want that much color on the canvas. I just want a little bit uh, and just thinning more and more with the the glazing liquid to be sure that I'm not overpowering uh, things too too much. Now you can uh, do again. Use the straight out of the, the bottle or tube color for those glazes, depending on the look you're trying to achieve. But again, in this case, I'm just trying to bring a little bit of warmth into some of these areas. This is just a plain X, so I can have a little bit more freedom. Here, I don't have to worry about staying in between all my lines, like, but I can just use it to kind of wipe away periodically. And be sure I'm not getting too crazy. Now, I mentioned before the, uh, the smalt hue, which is a heavy body color, <coughs> and that I will just thin with some water. And I use this color for my shadows a lot. So I really, in particular for these r upper rocks here, I really wanted to kick this back a little bit more to bring in more shadow. I also did some overlay work with the, with the zinc white. You can see how this particular section in the background, the rocks, it's a lot lighter. Uh, that's what that's from, is, is it's from I, I glazed with the, with the zinc white uh, to get that sort of faded uh, effect there. The smalt dries actually very differently than how it applies, so it, you're, it's going to look way more blue now. And then as it dries, it's going to pick up way more on the, on the underlying color and knock back uh, that whole shape a little bit more to create that shadow. Now, I did say I grabbed a little bit of the red. I want to, I think I want to start working with that on that. So I'll grab, loading up my brush with that Nicolazo gold. I'm going to mix in some of the naphthol crimson with just a tiny little bit and, and uh, the alizarin crimson hue. Now, Add some purple too. Why the hell not? I'm making a nice sort of deep that color, uh, and then again thinning it with the glaze. And then so for the rocks and the shadows in here, I can just pull some of those reds in. Just kind of tap them and work that out. And it, again, it doesn't do much. I'm not drastically changing the piece. I'm just bringing a little extra color in. And you think coming in over top of the greens with this redder color, it's going to make it more brown. So we're creating sort of a faux, a faux brown. Because of the way, you know, light, transparent light coming in and out of the color between uh, your substrate and uh, the surface level of the paint, it's going to make it look more brown where over here where it's yellow and the yellow and the orange makes it, you know, more orange and, and more of a lighter color. You can probably start to see now that blue starting to dry, and it's bringing all those dark colors in. But it doesn't look anywhere near as blue as it did when we first applied it. 
uh, off of the brush. So it's it's really this point in the in the painting that you can do a lot of these little things. You can come in with uh, with a, with a liner brush, which I'm going to be doing later. Uh, I'm going to be getting uh, probably some deeper. Uh, it's going to be more than likely black mixed with some of that Nicolazo gold to really kind of detail out a lot of shapes. Um, but that uh, this is not a detail video. This is a glazing video. I've actually already got a video on this channel about adding details and uh, thinning paint. A lot of people say, oh, you have to use medium when you're thinning your paint. You don't. I can certainly find that in the video as well. So that is just a quick look at acrylic glazing. Sorry about the backlighting. Uh, but uh, I really wanted to show that because just to show you what you can do with just a little bit of color. And a little bit of medium in this case, uh, you can, can just thin it with water, it works just fine. But uh, I actually like the medium in this case because if I'm working on the upper le surface levels, especially working with the, uh, the more liquid acrylics, uh, the, the high flows in the inks, uh, you're going to have surface tension, and especially if you're working on easel, you put a blob of that down, it's going to drip straight down your canvas. So I like having the medium to kind of uh, have a more flow and workability to the paint so it doesn't just drip all over the place. Uh, but I've got a lot of work ahead of me today. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get back uh, into this. I uh, hope you found this little uh, tip mini tutorial useful. Uh, also, the, I, again, mentioned before, but I'm kind of doing this video supplementing into a larger video about uh, my thought process behind making this piece. Uh, look forward to that video coming out soon. Uh, for all of you guys, keep on creating. Uh, if you like this, learn something, anything, hit the like button, get subscribed if not already. Keep on creating, and I will see you guys next time. Did that out of order. That's it.